Good afternoon. This is the East Long Meadow Broadband Committee meeting of October 13th, 2021. Uh, present at the meeting are myself, Don Mackey, um, Ryan Quimby, Connor Roche, Don Anderson, Karen Corpinen, and Mary McNally. Thanks all for coming. Um, I don't know. The first thing would be the minutes from January 13th. I don't know if everybody found those in the um, in the folder, but Connor had done them all that time ago. So if people had to, have not had a chance to look at them, we can postpone that till. I make a motion to approve the minutes from January 13th. Second. second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Thank you, Connor, for putting the uh, minutes together. Oh, you're welcome. Very, uh, very clear and uh, concise. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Um, Ryan Tom, Quimby, yes. 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 And I am a yes. I, got, I watch this all the time. But when I have to do it, boy, it's really hard. <laughs> and should I be voting, Don? Because aren't I, I don't, just ex officio? I believe you're ex officio. Yeah, okay. So, no, you shouldn't vote. Okay. That's what um, I thought. Thanks for asking. All right. Uh, my agenda. What did I do? Agenda. Shoot. Anybody have the agenda open? I had it open. I do. It's correspondence. Item three is, is next up. No correspondence. Then old business status of cable license is item four. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the cable license is, I, we had no communication. Um, I sent, and it's in the minutes from that, from the last meeting, sent a draft uh, proposal to charter. Um, I believe the date that I sent it was the 28th or something of January. Uh, I got an acknowledgement of receipt from John Mayer at Charter saying that he'd received it, and he sent it by legal, and he would get back. Um, we never heard another peep. I think I emailed once, and then I thought, well, nobody's going to pay attention to me. So Mary emailed, I think twice. No discovered reply. nobody pays attention to me either. So <laughs> that's 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 well. I will. So I'll I'll convey this, and I don't know if I did communicated this to you, Mary, or not. But I but I did have a conversation with another access uh, station manager in Massachusetts, a community that has charter, uh, and they have been waiting for their renewal for three years. They're oh three years post their renewal date with no communication from Charter. So I did reach out to the Department of Telecommunications and, Communications and Cable, uh, and I just basically left a phone message for a call back and received a call from a man named Michael Mail, whom we had some interaction with and he actually came to one or two of the uh of the meetings the last time we the license was renewed and um so he indicated to me that uh he was he was not pleased that that situation occurred um and suggested that he would try to reach out to mr mayor directly and that I should follow up and just remind Mr. Mayor that uh, I'd spoken with Michael Mail and we need to get this thing moving. I did so um, and I got an answer within, I think it was 20, you know, 16 hours or something from John Mayer saying, yes, I have it. Uh, actually, I don't have the original draft that you sent. Would you please resend it and we'll get moving on. That's where things stand now. That was uh, two weeks ago. 
So we'll see. But I have uh, instructions from Michael Mail uh, that if I don't hear anything by the end of this week, to call him back. Um, so that's the status of the license. And there's, it's interesting because there's really no change whatsoever from the current now expired document. So I'm not really sure what the holdup is on their end uh, that requires them to study it for seven months, but here we are. I guess on the bright side, as long as we're still getting paid out of it. <laughs> we are still getting paid. And that, and, and so actually is this other community uh, in central Massachusetts getting paid there, you know, it just, there seems to be a strategy of not communicating and not renewing, um, but just sort of letting things ride. And whether that's because they sort of see the whole thing dissolving sooner rather than later, I, I don't know. I have no way, I can only speculate, which I shouldn't do. So that's that, any, any questions about where that stands? All right, so the, the next item I believe is a discussion uh, regarding some sort of updated information about the status of how we do or do not move forward to consider a fiber project. And, um, I think I'll hand it over to Ryan. Me? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess the only one we need to bring up to speed is Mr. Anderson. Uh, we had met with, um, I forgot his name, I have it right here. Jeff Christensen from Entry Point Networks. He, uh, his company is the company that is putting together the proposal for Wilbraham. Uh, and Wilbraham's Fiber to the Home project. Uh, when we had talked about Fiber to the Home previously, uh, we were under the traditional mindset of we would run Fiber to the Homes, we would be an ISP, we would sell internet. Uh, Jeff's outlook on that is a little different. Basically, we would run Fiber to the Homes then to a central point, either in town or uh, regionalized with surrounding towns. And then ISPs would then just go to that point. So the town would carry the connection from the ISP meeting place to the homes. So now the ISPs don't have the overhead in town. They don't have to run to every single house. They can, uh, sorry, someone's shaking my door. Uh, they can, run to the one place, we can have competition. And then uh, it also gives us a network in town that we can then use other services for uh, as a software defined network. So basically the way the structure would be, would there would be an, a, a, an assessment for the actual municipal fiber network. So residents would get charged for that, uh, basically a bond in, to cover the expense of the install and the maintenance. And then they would pick their internet providers, provider or providers. Uh, what's nice about a setup like this is you don't like, right now you're using Spectrum, you don't like Spectrum, you go on the website, say you wanna have Comcast, then you get a new IP address, your internet is not coming through Comcast. Let's say you wanna have both, you could have Spectrum and Comcast, there'll just be two different ports on the switch inside your house, that would be like a municipal switch. So now you can have both ISPs. You can have uh, an ISP and then we can also have uh, private networking. So if we have remote work uh, situation, we can publish out a private network, basically extend the town's private municipal network or a company can extend their private corporate network right to someone's house. So plug your laptop into port number three and you're just like you were sitting at your desk. Uh, the other thing we're talking about or would, that would be a benefit would be the speed. So right now, uh, Charter, you can get a maximum, it's one gig download. And then I, I think it's a hundred meg upload. 
uh, the issue with that is in the, oh, the other way around, right? Oh, one gig. Oh, down. The uh, yeah, maybe I'm maybe lose my train of thought, Tom. Sorry, man. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, with the fiber, we would have symmetrical download and upload speeds. So the majority of internet browsing today is download speeds. Um, where that starts to change drastically is when you start looking at uh, 8K video, sharing more video, uh, virtual reality types uh, scenarios. That's where you need to have a fast upload speed and you need to be able to communicate a lot faster than you would uh, with what's available now with uh, the DOCSIS, they call it DOCSIS 3.1, which is the standard for the cable modems. They are working on DOCSIS 4.0, which actually is more of a fiber network anyway. Uh, what else am I missing? Yeah, no, I think that's, I mean, so, uh, and the other aspect of that is, is work from home is, is absolutely changing the upload requirements um, because you have people doing all kinds of work and, and they need to move those files in the other direction. Um, so I don't know, Don, we, I put together a PowerPoint. I think the goal here and maybe to sort, it'll be, I guess, evident in the PowerPoint. And my suggestion this morning to Ryan was that maybe uh, we just run through that sort of practice mode because I think the goal is to present it to the council uh, on November 9th. Um, the first, I believe the first step uh, that should be undertaken as we move this process forward is to um, ask the council to consider the first of two votes to adopt a municipal lighting plant uh, designation for the town because none of this can really happen without that being adopted. And that's a process that takes two votes by the council and then ultimately a ballot vote by the town. So there's a lot of other work and research and development and planning that can get done as that's happening, but that really needs to sort of kick off the process and the sooner rather than later. So. And that it was the forming of the MLP, as Don was saying with the two votes, it has to span fiscal years. Correct. It can't be you know, just back to back meeting. Well, I guess unless it's June and July, but it's got to be across fiscal years. And uh, oh, one of the things we, I forgot to mention too was the estimated cost uh, per resident for the Fiber of the Home project. Um, and Jeff had pretty much guaranteed we can do uh, full gig symmetrical per house for $55 or less. And that's, that's both components. So that's the, the component for the resident, for the town's fiber network, for the, for the infrastructure. And then the anticipated cost in a competitive marketplace at the other end for them to choose among three to five, say, ISPs, um, that they're going to then be, without any overhead, competing for those customers. Um, and then the, that's between the subscriber and the ISP over a credit card and the town has no, then we don't have a, we're not operating a utility with billing or any of that. It's just network management. So I have a couple, can I ask a question? Um, first of all, is there, is there an opt out on behalf of any resident who doesn't want cable, uh, fiber to come to their house or is it all or nothing fee? It's, I think that would, something that, that would be ironed out in the uh, consulting study. Right. Uh, I, I believe in order for it to be successful, it would be uh, everybody. So every town would be assessed um, kind of like a betterment, like when they do sewer based uh, for the fiber network. Yeah, so okay. you, would, you would have access to the fiber network. You would be assessed on it. Uh, you would have to pay it uh, at least until the bond is paid off. And then uh, the maintenance, I think, might be an opt-out you can do. So there's really three components, two of which fall under the town. 
one would be the the bond payoff for the installation and the other part of it is the network operation maintenance cost okay so that might be a problem if people didn't want it um we'd kind of be in kind of be imposing that right if i understand you correctly yeah. um but that's okay we can further discuss that um and is the municipal light plant <clears throat> Is that a, an actual physical place or is it a virtual no. uh, hookup or how, how does a, that work? It's a, it's a concept. It's a concept. Okay. <laughs> as best as I'm, I can I'm all for that. It. So, so let me, and, and Ryan has questioned from the beginning, well, if we're not, if we're not providing the service, we're just building the network. Why does it matter? And it, yeah. and it really is the municipal light plant is the plant. It's the physical plant of the, of the wires in the ground or when it originated with electric and gas uh, utilities operated by municipalities. Right. It was basically the, the, the grant by the state to be able to provide that service to residents from the municipality rather than a private utility. So when, and in the legislation, if if you if you look at it, it actually talks about uh, cable and tele antenna television systems. Um, so it predates the internet and really gave municipalities back in the day the opportunity to build their own and operate their own cable networks or cable television. Yeah. Nobody nobody took that opportunity because they let the contractors come in and do it. Um, but that's. It, it, it really was just bundled in with that legislation. And so that's where it has stayed, even though it, that may be a little bit of an archaic place for it at this point, um, but you still need to get that designation in order to operate that network as a public utility. All right, and the bond that <clears throat> Ryan referenced would be to finance what, the extension of the fiber throughout the community, essentially? Yes. And do you have any idea of the cost of that? No clue. No. Okay. Said. <laughs> he no. said uh, no. numbers they were looking at for Wilbraham, I think were, I forgot what they were, but our existing, we can leverage our existing municipal fiber network and yeah. that should help offset the cost considerably. The uh, other part of our, that should help offset some of the original initial bond would be, uh, so all these fiber connections have to terminate somewhere and then we'll terminate again. Uh, so we have fiber to like all the schools, all the municipal buildings to some of the pump stations uh, mm -hmm. where we can then have a full neighborhood area terminate to a pump station and then have that go to our ISP meeting area. So it's not going to be like a single fiber from every single house in town to one central location. It'll be kind of uh, daisy chained a little bit. Yeah. But, well, I'm but, I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to throw darts because I think that I think it's somewhat of a complex and novel idea for the town. And with due respect to the counselors here on the committee, um, it may be a hard sell. And I would just encourage. Don and Brian, since you're going to kind of be leading the charge here, um, to be as thorough as possible. So I don't know if November is a push. Uh, that's only a couple of weeks away, the next meeting. And believe me, I'm not trying to discourage you, but I, I don't want you to become discouraged if, if it goes over like a lead balloon at first uh, conversation, you know? Yeah. So the, so the first step we're looking for, so we can form the MLP. Uh, at pretty much zero cost. It's a couple of votes, um, probably a little bit of an expense for some legal opinions that may be needed or some documents yeah. that may need, to, uh, may need to be drafted. Um, and the other part I think we should work on in parallel would be the consulting and engineer uh, draft engineering expenses that would give us a report on where we should go with Islam Mato in order to develop this network as well as a uh, very rudimentary uh, engineering drawing. Uh, like as I was saying before, how we can have town, uh, uh, 
houses linked to municipal buildings where we can then use that as like an aggregation point. Yeah. The, the engineering study would roll it like, we'll examine all that and say, okay, well, we may need to add an aggregation point in this area of town, or, you know, we may, we would want to use this aggregation point in this area of town. And then uh, that would give us enough information to be able to say, okay, well, based off the engineering and the consulting fee, the residential assessment is going to be $20 per house per month for X amount of years. And then it gives us a better, a lot more data to, to be able to make an educated yeah. vote on. Oh, you're right. And you had mentioned too, that the possibility of uh, whether ARPA funds would be available for this expansion. I have not yet done the research on that as I think I said I wanted to last time we talked. Um, I think it might be a little bit of a push, but it's certainly worth investigating to see if some of those startup costs could be funded by ARPA as opposed to free cash or special budget increases or something. But I guess my concern would be that it just be presented perhaps in phases. As you say, you have to do two votes over consecutive fiscal years on the MLP. Um, I, I just think baby steps would be more successful um, for the overall implementation than trying to throw the whole gorilla in one meeting at the council. Just, just my thoughts on. No, I, so I, I, I agree completely. I think, I think the goal is really to give I, the goal, I think our goal, my goal for November 9th would be to sort of just, you know, give a broad sort of overview of kind of functionally what we're talking about yeah. with the idea that if this seems like a good idea, we can proceed with the MLP process. Again, as Ryan says, at, at no real cost, that's just you adopt it, you don't need to use it. You're not actually acquiring anything, nothing physical. You're just getting the approval of the state to continue with this process. Yeah, okay, so, well, that all makes sense. Um, the other thing is the engineering will determine, and there are other models, and there are communities all over the country that are doing this. Some are doing it, you know, we're, I think, looking at, underground because the fiber network that we have is underground to the extent that it that it goes and it's pretty far. I think I had a conversation with someone at Charter. They have 15 nodes presently in East Long Meadow, which to which their fiber goes. And then from those 15 nodes, they break out with coax to the various neighborhoods and they run about 300 to 350 customers on one connection. <laughs> so that tells you why when they say they're giving you 100 megabytes per second download, that's what they're providing. And then they're basically playing poker as to who's using it when to divvy that up among up to 300 yeah. people. So this yeah. would be, even though we're going to the nodes at the pump stations or wherever. It is it is one connection between the ISP hub and the household. Right. Because you can have so many connections on one piece of fiber. So that's a distinction. The other thing is we don't have to be underground. There are communities that pursue it based on people who sign up that you're really doing it the old fashioned way of saying, well, we're gonna roll this out and we're gonna build it in stages based on how many people in a given area or neighborhood right. yeah. are willing to pay for it. That, that's still a viable model. Economically, you know, it's a good, it changes the numbers, but all of those things can be looked at and I think should be looked at. I think all of that should be considered so that you're making the best decision um, because yeah, you don't necessarily want to impose an undue burden on every property owner 
to participate in something that they have no interest in participating in. Well, that, that's a concern. I think that needs to be at least acknowledged. At least looked at, sure. Yeah. So I don't know. What do you think, Ryan, about running through that thing? Does, to me, it's uh, like it would be helpful, but I don't, I mean, everybody seen it except Don and I, I don't want to, what do you think? I think we've given some suggestions on it. I, I just don't want to like, be respectful of people's time because it's a little okay, long. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I don't know, Don, would you want to walk through or do you want to look at it at your leisure? What do you think? I mean, since all of you have seen it, I'll look at it at my leisure, but uh, Mary makes a fine point about the cost is going to be a concern. And we need to have something, even if it's ballpark figures. But number two is the elephant in the room, uh, Elon Musk. I mean, he's coming in with the, the Star, uh, was it called Starlink satellites as all part of the SpaceX program. And once that's set up, they're looking at a lower cost than the typical American is paying for internet. It's going to be around 99 a month for the relative, for the speed. And it's going to develop some uh, some pretty good speed. I'm, I'm, again, I've been reading this stuff during my off time, and it looks it looks very promising. So we just have to be careful of you know the old adage making buggy whips when the Model T is coming off the assembly line. So if that's the future coming in with satellite and Musk coming in and saying to our our residents, you don't need to be part of this. We can give you faster internet speed for less money is something we just have to weigh, weigh into that as well. So when we left off with this committee, one of the, I think, sort of what we were thinking was, Elon Musk aside, that 5G was going to essentially be the same thing. I, I, Part of the I reason that we're those, having yeah. this conversation today is because mm -hmm what seems like it might happen and what's actually achievable and doable and uh, is going to generate the kind of investment to make it work, uh, those are two different things. And I think Ryan has some information that Jeff provided you know, over the summer um, relative to the 5G thing, which applies really to satellite. None of this works none of it works without fiber the as soon the sooner you get to fiber the better it works so the idea that there's all this wireless satellite magic technology out there that's going to be better than fiber is it's that's incorrect because it depends on a fiber connection and are you going to pay a private company to install that fiber in order to make that system do what they claim it can do. Theoretically, yeah, it can do that. But that requires an investment, which is exactly why Charter goes to 15 nodes and then runs existing copper everywhere else. And no other cable company is going to come in and put in a fiber system because it's too expensive. We have a fiber system that goes pretty extensively already throughout the town. So it, it anyway, Brian, one, you want to share that from Yeah, here? so a uh, little bit like how Don was alluding to with uh, Charter, they have, what well, they would you say, 30 nodes in town? 15. Fif okay, 15 nodes in town. So if you have each node connected via a 10 gig connection, which is, kind of like the industry standard right now. That means of the 6,000, so was it 6,000 households divided by 15, you got 400 households on a single 10 gig connection, which puts their actual usable connection a lot less should everybody start using it. Same thing with like uh, with 5G, you know, 5G right now is great. But look at like when the tornado hit and everybody hopped on their phones, the entire network crashes. It's not designed to handle full demand where, you know, like households, how many households now don't have actual cable TV anymore? They have streaming. 
And now you have 4K streaming. And then in five to seven years, you're going to have 8K streaming. So with 8K streaming, a single TV streaming 8K is 120 megabytes megabits per second. So now you have two TVs. It starts adding up really quick where if you have 5G or at that point, 6 or 7G, who knows what's going to be out there, then the networks can't handle that much demand over wireless because you still come down to the just the basic physics of it. You can't fit that much data over wireless over long distance. So in order to have a 5G or future wireless technology, you need to have more nodes. That's why like your Wi-Fi that you have in your house, like Wi-Fi 6, you can use it, but you have to have an access point in your house. You can't use your neighbor's access point to have that high throughput. And that runs at, you know, five gigahertz. You can't have, uh, you know, we deal with in the schools here all the time. When we first did our Wi-Fi network on 2.4 gigahertz with 802.11n, I think it was, we had, you know, one access point per four to six classrooms. Now we have at least one access point for every single classroom just because you need to shorten that distance. You need to shorten the amount of clients that are connected to one aggregation point. And that's, you know, our new Wi-Fi now can use beam forming and all kinds of other technology that the uh, wi uh, cellular networks can do too. But there's a lot of clients where they're not like right now, all of our phones are sitting around not doing any data, but you know, your home ones probably are. If you have Nest cameras, they're streaming. If you have right other Wi-Fi devices that are always connected, they're always streaming. You need to have that connection that's always going right now. Yep. That's where the wireless and the satellite differ. Connor. Something that I didn't realize too, when um, I think we were talking with Jeff was he was saying more about 5G too. And originally we thought that it was just going to expand pretty quickly all over the place. But I thought there was like a limit that he said of like, it can only reach like a thousand feet or something before you yeah, need very short. The distance uh, another very point short. compared to like traditional cell towers where it can go for miles. And I think they were saying that a lot of those cell companies were running into problems of not having a place to install it because people didn't want all these little hubs up and down their street, right. free 10 houses or something. So it's, again, it's not that it's not doable. I think all of that does need to be looked at. Um, but again, I think the way I've been thinking about it is that it, you know, what six months ago for this committee seemed like, well, the market will probably take care of it. The town does not need to make this kind of an investment. That, that, which, that looks different today because there's different information that makes the economics, you know, look better and provides an opportunity for, especially with, with work from home and from businesses. A business now that has a gigabit connection from Charter is paying for a commercial connection. I think, Ryan, did you tell 400 me? 400 bucks. 400 bucks a month. Yeah. And if you get that as a residential, you ostensibly that's what you're getting for 130 a month. But again, you're sharing that. You're not going to get that dedicated gigabit connection to your house. They're just going to pull it off of somebody else to get that bandwidth. The other uh, component that we haven't really touched on too much is uh, we're locked into one vendor right now. You can't, there's no competition for internet service in East Lamado. I mean, there's, I don't even think you can buy DSL anymore. You can get internet from Spectrum and that's it. You know, I think Starlink will be a great option as well. But then again, now you're going to have only two vendors. This would give us competition where any ISP can come in and provide service as they want. They just have to get to our internet hub or our regional internet hub. And again, just to I'll beat the point to death. It all needs to be looked at. We, we will need to, you know, at some point, um, do what Wilbraham did, 
and get funding for a consultant to with the expertise to actually look at the data and look at the information and make the determination about what's viable, what makes economic sense, what becomes burdensome to the residents. I, you know, all of that's still in the mix. Again, it doesn't make sense to do any of that without starting on the MLP process. So that's, that's really my priority right now. Don. Just a segue from what you just said. How far, how further, much further along is Wilbraham in this process? Do we know what, would they be willing to share what a consultant costs? And do they have uh, already a pre existing fiber setup similar to what we have? Uh, they have a couple of short fiber runs. They don't have a wide scale municipal fiber network uh, like we have. Uh, the engineering. The conceptual engineering drawings are a dollar per premise. Uh, so I, that would be basically anywhere where we would drop a line. So it's about $7,000 on the high end, probably closer to six. Uh, then the consulting fee is, Donna, do you have that up? I do not. Sorry. Uh, they sent us a proposal. Uh, I it was, was it 20? 20? I think it was like 20. Uh, it's it's in that folder um, in the in the team drive for uh, yeah fiber to the home yeah I got it you got it yeah loading while you're doing that just real quick Wilbraham is charter like we are and they correct. have a similar contract like we have correct okay or, or lack thereof or lack thereof like we do <laughs> so they're legally they got they did their MLP like two and a half or three years ago. They went through that process Bef really before they, I think before they engaged the consultant, they put the, the, they put the consultant thing out to bid or I don't know how they proceeded with that, but they did the MLP before they really launched, you know, an intentional search for engineering and, and advice. Um, well, their proposal is uh, not to exceed twenty five thousand. So call it twenty five thousand. And that and so, what you, can you just run down what that includes? Because he's he pretty much specified in there. Oh, I just skip right to the end. Let's see. Uh, entry points can propose consulting fees for managing the process of preparing a broadband master plan with feasibility analysis. In community engagement program for the town of East Long Meadow. Uh, these are all the members, project team. Recommended scope of work. Uh, does education uh, educate the town leadership on key options for strategy? Uh, can hold one on one select uh, sessions with uh, town versus selectmen and department heads uh, as needed. Provide comparison of available media between fiber optic, DSL, coax, and wireless. Uh, develop a list of key considerations for uh, town council, department heads, and staff. Uh, then community engagement, it helps. And then they also do planning analysis and documentation. And um, there's a lot that it covers. So, can... yeah, the sort of the broad spectrum of preliminary work that you risk analysis right don um i don't want to sound like a broken record but the presentation at least the initial one has to focus on just getting the initial buy-in because this has shades of shared health services to me you know you're working very hard you're convinced your experts uh, certainly beyond anything that I would pretend to be capable of understanding and no offense to the council, but I don't, aside from Connor and Don, I don't know that there's too many people on the council who will have that fingertip understanding of the concepts and all that goes into it. So I guess I'm just trying to be a little maternalistic here and say, <laughs> let's take 
short steps and be as thorough as possible because you want that first step. But before, you know, before we get to the real meat and potatoes here, we have to get that first buy-in. Correct. And so, I want you to get it. And that's why I'm suggesting that however you present it, I think it has to be dumbed down for, my, well, for me well, if for no one else. Um, so I, so I, those are just my thoughts. And I, I guess I'm getting political here. And I, I don't really mean to you know, lose focus on the substance of what we're talking about. But it's not going to fly unless it gets by and as correct as you correct. well know. So part of the reason, and again, I, I, I mean, we've used up a big chunk of time already. And I, but part of the reason I hoped that we, because I, that was the intent of the presentation that I put together was to put the information, have it be sort of clear cut, accurate, um, and just sort of build a context for the steps, the sort of the ultimate possibility, but how the pieces fit together and why the MLP needed to be the thing that we had to focus on first. If it doesn't do that, I, then either yes, in, if, we, if we push the meeting back, that's fine. But to me, that seemed like a, a good way to make the presentation, a better than Ryan and I going back and forth the way we've done it today, sort of randomly trying to pull out the information that we wanted to remember to say. So I just, I think we need to know how to change that PowerPoint if it needs to be changed, if we need to cut information out of it. Um, because I agree with you and I, yeah, I don't want the perception to be created that we've got this all figured out and we want your buy-in to go the whole nine yards. Well, maybe the PowerPoint presentation and, and your explanation could be at the November meeting with a caveat that you're not asking the council to approve anything that night, but just Absolutely. listen. Yeah. And then maybe at the next meeting, after they've had a chance to develop questions or pose those questions to the members of this committee and think it through. And well, that was my intention. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just Good. to present it, just to say, look, this is a thing that has come up and we're thinking about, here's some information about it in a somewhat organized fashion and see what you think. But that was, that's how I perceived it. Yeah, I just I wasn't a looking bit. for a vote. Believe me, I wasn't looking for a vote before probably sometime after the first of the year. Well, I also don't want you to get peppered with questions on the first night that maybe need some time to find the answers to or develop the thorough answer. So that's all. Yep. No, I. All of your instincts, Mary, are always appreciated. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm, uh, Ryan, were you going to add something before I spoke over you? Oh, I was just going to say I already started running fiber down my street, but. <laughs> you want to connect it to my house too? <laughs> yeah, while you're at it, you know. Run, yeah, run past you guys, grab both your houses, and uh, right. you know, may as well. Take <laughs> um, but I think a lot of these questions that uh, we've had here and that the council will have or even residents will have are really questions that would be answered by the consulting study. You know, we can have this consulting study and determine, nope, it's not, it's not an economically good decision Correct. to the town. Uh, they might be able to say, okay, well, we can phase it in. We can do it by neighborhoods. Uh, it'll increase the cost per uh, install, but since we have a municipal fiber network, it might be cheaper because we're saving money on the other side of it. It's really, you know, my speculation and Don's speculation and kind of why as a parallel first step or even, you know, step 1.5 would be the consulting engineering study. 
that would that gives us a baseline where we have the data in front of us for East Long Meadow. Uh, we know which way we should or shouldn't go, or if we shouldn't do anything. Yeah, I think um, looking at the PowerPoint right now, I think that that point might need to be made more clear because I think right now next steps are listed as kind of engaging the community and the MLP, and if it's really the MLP and that consulting process, that just might need to be clear clarified a little bit at the end. Yep. Good point. Yeah. But uh, Don, I also I shared I added you to our the team drive for this, uh, so you should get an email for it. And uh, in there, there's the proposal from this vendor for East Long Meadow, as well as uh, the proposal that they had provided for Wilbraham. <clears throat> Is it in there right now? Yep. And probably broadly speaking in terms of, you know, after presenting this information just as a background and context for where we are and potential opportunities going forward after the consulting and so forth. It sounded like we were in a somewhat better situation than Wilbraham too, and that although they were further ahead with the MLP, our costs could potentially be lower given our existing fiber infrastructure that right. they really don't have in quite the scale that we do. Right. And even setting up the MLP, I mean, I think like you said, Ryan, aside from maybe a little bit for some legal opinions or something, even if we do nothing with it after it's created, it doesn't harm the town. Right. Anyway. Ryan, I just sent you a request. It's asking permission to allow me into Google Docs. Uh, let's see here. Um, I mean, I can check it later. I just... Just says oh, yeah, it's probably trying to access with your personal account. Oh, let me see. So, again, yeah. mindful of the time here. Um, I, I guess if you know, I think most of you have looked through that uh, presentation. Uh, Karen, you make a great point, but really anything. I think the, the more anybody's willing to scrutinize it and, you know, I think we can, I'll certainly look at it uh, and, and, and really try to take out anything that seems a little bit too enthusiastic or a little bit too overbearing. Um, <laughs> it's tricky because there's, there's one member of the team who just really is not the trot here. Aaron. <laughs> Uh, no, I think I think to your point, Mary, and, and the analogy with shared public health is, uh, you know, and I wonder. Sort of a wake I up don't call. want you guys to be disappointed, and um, I know how invested Ryan is because he told me I don't know a month or so ago that he hasn't been this excited about a project in the town <laughs> in ten or twelve years, and that enthusiasm is is energizing and I don't want to lose it. So I don't want to take a chance on. No, understood. You know, and so that's where my comments come from. I know you understand that, but um, cause it can be very demoralizing when you put your energy and your heart and soul into a project. And if it doesn't fly, you know, your reaction to that can sometimes not be totally positive. So. Yep. Yep. Um, that's that's where I'm coming from, and I, I know you know that. So I was just re-looking through the presentation, and I wonder, I think there's a lot of good background information kind of saying like what the overview is, where we are today, how we got here sort of thing. Um, I think when we start talking about like the MLP, since that's kind of a potential next step, I wonder if we just have way too many slides about it going into too much detail at this point. Maybe it's just yeah. Maybe so. Maybe we just keep those as hidden slides, so we have those as reference material if we get asked. But at least for now, we'll say here's a broad thing of, you know, we need it because that's the state statute, but not because we want to say you got to have two votes in this thing and that thing. 
Yeah, I mean, I think in fairness, though, I mean, I think the two votes, the timeline that it's two votes in con two consecutive fiscal years and a ballot vote. I, yeah, I think you got to be upfront that that's what we're talking about. Oh, we probably should for for that just to you know give clue that there's a long process for that, but maybe not the. Well, we could shorten some of that and then yeah. put some bullets in the speaker notes and bring it up as as we're presenting it too. Right. So, so by the time it gets to the two fiscal years and the vote, will this system already be in place in Wilbraham by that time? No, no, no. Will it be? How far away will it be? Have that? Will they have had their vote already? They've already had. So they they have they've had, they had their votes for a couple years. years ago. I know. I mean the the town wide. They did. Oh, it's okay. Been done. All right. So there they got their two fiscal years. They got the town white. Okay. Correct. Yeah. They've had it for some time. Again, prior to them initial. And so their consultant came and published their report, which was what last spring. When was that? Uh, I think it was longer. I don't know when you handed it around, but it, so oh. yeah, they're, they're far, much farther along that way, but they haven't really started much of a build out at all and so oh yeah their broadband master plan is from march 15 21 so it's actually not that uh i thought for some reason it was older than that but no it's pretty recent so all right well um anybody have any anything else yes do we have a, a possible way to get a link to their public hearing that they had on this matter so we can anticipate some of the public's questions if they've already got to vote they already have this i assume they, they probably have something on their version of lcat that I can find out. share that link and yeah, we can we can get check it. With anthony and see if there is uh if there is something so that's oh, a I'm question that came up today about i don't i don't know um that since it's two votes of the council and a ballot vote, that there's necessarily a public hearing, right? Because the ballot vote, at least the way I'm just interpreting it at, right at the moment is that the ballot vote sort of supersedes what a public hearing would accomplish. And I would like to think that to promote it to the public, they had some type of Public oh, I'm sure they had information sessions and all of that, which absolutely yeah. we want to do, yeah. but right. But so what, I don't know that there would be something, I, I don't know okay. if they recorded that, but mm. yeah, we can find out. But I suppose probably to Don's point. Thanks, Karen. Even if it's not a public hearing comparative to here, it may be the same sort of questions that their public asked that our counselors would ask. Or... Karen just shared us the link. There it is. Oh. Perfect. Me to it. I haven't tested it yet, but it looks promising. So, looks it's, and it's with, uh, interviews with Jeff. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. There you go. And can we um, find out what they paid for their legal fees to get that MLP set up? Do you think? Do you know anybody over there that could answer that for us? Yeah, I can ask uh, Nick. Was the town administrator? Yeah, Nick Bro might have that info. It would just yeah. be helpful just oh, to I get love, a sense, even I though it's a couple Nick. of years ago. I beg your pardon? I love bugging Nick, so. <laughs> I love bugging him, too. Maybe I'll <laughs> call him, too. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess if I'm running the show here, are we, if anybody has said all that they need to say today, thank you very much. Um, or do you want to try to, I don't know if we do this again, how do we decide? So my, my, my goal in meeting was to vote as a committee to recommend that, to recommend to the council uh, that initiating the MLP process would be a positive thing. If we're not ready to make that recommendation right now, that's fine. I don't, I don't know that that makes sense, but we would have to meet and do that prior to any meeting that we were gonna present information to the council. Could you take that, somebody make that motion now and vote on it and 
you don't have to have a date certain. It could be November 9th, but you could also internally decide to wait if you thought you needed extra time. So you follow me if you vote to. I, I want to make sure I follow. So, so we, if there's a consensus here, we would vote for the recommendation and just whenever it was appropriate to do that. That, that was my thought. That, that would be done. So if we're ready to do that today, that's fine. If anybody has a motion that they want to make. Sure, I'll make a motion for the broadband committee to recommend to the town council to move forward with the establishment of a municipal light plant and for the broadband committee to present to the town council uh, about the municipal light plant. Is that good? Second. All right, any further discussion? I mean, I, I haven't seen the PowerPoint as much as in principle. It sounds like a, an idea worth, I, I really should abstain only just I'm getting on, on this late. But I, so, I mean, you know, I still encourage a positive vote, but I think uh, logistically I should abstain because I have not, I'm, I'm still getting up to speed. Yeah, you got kind of tossed into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which again, that was, but, but I think this has been a productive discussion. Um, well, so now uh, roll call vote then, uh, Don, you abstained, Abstain. Ryan? Uh, aye. Uh, Connor? Yes. And I am a yes as well. All right. So thank you, Mary. Uh, anything else? Motion to Motion adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in Thanks favor. for your time, guys. It's always a pleasure. Oh, thank you, Mary. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks, Karen. <clears throat> Thanks, Karen. Take care. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did we vote? We did. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Don, did you vote? Yes, again. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I can't keep track. That's all right. This is hard. I don't know how oh, people good. do the Zoom thing. <laughs> all right. Take care. Adios.